Glad you're uh, back again, guys. I want to uh, start off here real quickly with a little reminder. Let's remember we're in the holy presence of God. Today, what I'd like to do is show you a bunch of uh, demonstrations and help you uh, with the concept of the mole once again. I'm going to go and move the camera around from time to time just so you can get a chance to see things that we've done and some new things that we're going to do. Uh, on my bench top up here, I want to focus first on something that you saw the other day. These are those four different metals that we looked at, aluminum, zinc, copper, and iron. And we massed all of them, found that their masses matched up with the values of masses on the periodic table. What I want to do today is show you information that goes on a little further than that. Uh, you'll remember that <clears throat> we took a look the other day at uh, some pennies. We talked about the jar of pennies and how would we figure out what is the number of pennies in here. A couple different ways. A bunch of guys suggested to me that you could just literally count them. Uh, two or three uh, students actually suggested by massing them. And one student, uh, one or two students also uh, suggested do it, doing it by volume. So all of the answers were correct. On my whiteboard up here, I'm going to move this a little closer too so you can see. I have illustrated ways in which you can count things. So hopefully uh, the, the visual is coming up for you pretty well. Um, Wait, let me stop and move this closer. I'd like you to look at uh, some of the materials I'm, I've listed here. First of all, with the pennies, we talked about the idea that you could count them. We also mentioned the fact that you can mass them, and they all take up a certain volume. So we can do counting, massing, and getting volume. The next idea, which we talked about, was the metal blocks. We took only one. We masked it, but we also could get its volume. We can take a little metric ruler and figure out how big it is. Uh, the next idea is one that I'd like to show you here on the tabletop. First of all, I'm going to indicate that it's a dice or a bunch of dice. We can count them. We can get their masses. And we can get their volume. And then eventually I'll show you some elements made of atoms where we can count them, get their mass, get their volume. And the final thing I'd like to show you is that we can take compounds, which are molecules or ions combined together. We can count them, mass them, and determine their volume. So all of the arrangements of particles here can be measured in the same fashion. Now, let me move a little closer here to the next demonstration. I'm going to turn the camera down so that you're looking at one of our electronic scales. <clears throat> I've taken a single die and what I want to do is get its mass. So I'll place it on the balance and it quickly reads 5.43. Then on my board I've indicated that one die has a mass of 5.43 grams. In this container, in the speaker, I have 11 die or dice. I'm going to add them to the one that's on the balance already. So we'll have a total of 12. And we'll mass them. So here's what it looks like on the balance. There's our pile of a dozen dice. And I'm going to read the number off of the uh, display on the balance, and it's reading 67.10. So let me go back to what we have on the whiteboard up here. 67.10 is the current mass. Now, I want to see if mathematically that works out to be pretty close to the mass of these 12 dice by doing it with a multiplication. So I'm taking my calculator 
I'm typing in the mass of one dice, <clears throat> 5.43. I'm going to multiply that by 12. Let's try it again. 5.43 times 12. And the display now is reading for me a value that mathematically we would get. And that number, I'm not sure how well you're able to see, 65.16. Let me put that on the whiteboard. So when I multiply by 12, I get 65.16 grams. How well do these two values agree? Uh, they're pretty close. Given the uncertainties that you can have in a balance, uh, or the fact that some of the, the dice are a little bit differently made, uh, that's a reasonable answer. So counting them, getting their mass, we could also determine their volume, uh, figure out how much space they take up. And you can do that a couple of different ways. You can measure them, Put them in water, see how much water gets pushed aside. There's a number of different ways to do that. So there's our 12 dice. We've gotten their measurements now. Now I'm going to switch and talk about a bunch of different substances, both elements and compounds. So I'm going to turn the video off just briefly. The uh, metal blocks that we talked about, each of them, in fact, this is in some of the notes that you guys sent me, each of them has a certain mass, but it's also a given, vo a, a given number of particles, in other words, a mole. And each of these was definitely, each of the metal blocks was definitely a mole. And now what I've done is I've gone to our supply uh, cabinets in the other uh, uh, prep room, and I've put together uh, a number of substances that we want to very briefly talk about. Um, the containers that I have here are simple. Uh, peanut butter gel jars that have been filled with a number of substances, and I want to show you what some of those are. Uh, this one contains pieces of copper in the form of wire. Hopefully you can see that. The next one has lumps of sulfur in it. This is an element. The next one this is lead shot that you might find in a shotgun shell. So these are lead pellets. Turn that around for you. Our fourth one is silicon, SI, in the periodic table. Uh, and it's lumps of gray-like material. It has a little bit of luster on it. A little hard to see through the jar. Last one is pieces of aluminum metal, so it's one of our elements again. And each of these, if you look at them, they are different in appearance. And you can think of ways that they are different. What I would suggest to, uh, to you when you're doing your notes for this is to uh, consider some of the ways that they look different. One of them I'm going to tell you is definitely color. Uh, another one is how heavy they are. Here's my lead, here's my aluminum. If I were to put these on a, a balance and compare them, uh, the lead very definitely is much heavier than the aluminum. So masses are different, colors are different. Let me push those aside and bring up the substances that are behind here. Again, I can see that there are some differences. These turn out to be compounds, and the compounds I'm going to describe for you, tell you about them. Uh, this is sodium, dichro uh, sodium dichromate, uh, a yellowish compound, crystalline, and Na2CrO4. The next compound is a blue crystal, and you've used this in the lab. Beautiful, beautiful color, and it is copper. Get that in the front camera there for you. It's copper sulfate with five water molecules attached to it. Our next one, kind of a white material, crystalline. Okay. This is silicon dioxide or sand. 
The next one, here's a white compound. It fills a lot of the jar up. Uh, its substance is very familiar to you. This is table sugar, C12H22O11. The last one I want to show you, compound again. This is cobalt chloride, and it's nice dark reddish purple color. Here's the formula, COCl2. So each of these substances has also differences, and I'm going to mention to you right off, the, the uh, colors are different. You want to think of some other ones. The uh, masses are different, and these would be typical uh, similarities and differences that we could compare these materials to. So the first batch I showed you, they were all elements. In other words, they're all just atoms. This batch is molecules and uh, compounds made with ions. So it's a combination of a bunch of atoms all together. For example, my sugar is, bring it up close, six carbons, 22 hydrogens, 11 oxygens. Compare that to the sand, one silicon, two oxygens. So these are compounds. So on your notes, you uh, want to put down some differences that there, there are among all of these materials. There are different masses, different colors, and you think of some other ones. Now, each of them has a similarity. They're all the same of something. And the something is what we have up on the board here. They are all this many particles. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If they're an element, they're atoms. If they're a molecule or compound, their molecules are ions. That's the total number. Now, how did I get them in there? Well, I have a pair of tweezers. And my question to you is, do you think this is how I put them in? Very carefully, moving them from one container to another. If you're thinking, no, you are right. I can't get a single atom or molecule with this set of tweezers. It's just too, uh, too big an object compared to the atom. So the way that I get these is by using the tool that we have used all along, and that is our periodic table. If I was doing the elements, such as I have here, lead and sulfur, I just simply look them up on the periodic table, find their mass, mass them on a balance, put them in the jar. I did not use tweezers. I used a little scoop, pick them up, dump them into they were the right mass. If I was doing a compound, I would take the compound's formula, look it up. Here we go again, copper sulfate. Look at all the components that make it up for copper sulfate. Let's try to keep that still for you. I got a copper, one sulfur, four oxygens, five times two or ten hydrogens, and five times one, five oxygens, all combined together to make the compound. And what I have to do is take all those individual atoms, count them out using the periodic table, get their mass, and add all the values together. That's how I figure out what to put in the jars. So each jar represents one mole, the same number of particles, but having different masses, different uh, colors, and you're going to try to figure out some other things that are slightly different about them. Now I'm going to stop the video and show you some more things up on the front here on the bench.